Let's see how we can create cool, smooth scene transition like this one. And also this one, which is a simple fade. You can grab all of the scripts and the assets in the description below for free, including my water pack and moving platforms and much, much more. For this simple system, we're going to have a scene transition class, which is going to be a simple abstract class. It's going to have two methods, an animate in and an animate out method. Then we're going to have a bunch of different classes that inherit from scene transition. For example, crossfade, which simply fades an image in and out or circle white which moves a circle across the screen and then we're going to have a level manager class which is going to be a singleton so that we can access it from anywhere and because we only want one single instance of a level manager and it's going to have a method that loads the scene asynchronously and it also calls a specific transition animation be it crossfade or circle wipe or something else first we're going to create a new canvas and we're going to call it the level manager i'm going to set it to scale with screen size so that it fits to our resolution and you can input your target resolution here then we're going to create a empty child game object and we're going to call it transitions container which is just going to contain all of the different transition animations like the fading and sliding and stuff like that finally we're going to create a slider which is going to be our loading bar i'm going to remove the handle i'm going to make the background color dark green and i'm going to make the fill color a uh, light gray next we're going to create the scene transition class we're going to make it abstract and we're going to replace the start and update functions with two new private abstract core routines one is going to be be the animate transition in and the other animate transition out next we're going to create a level manager class and we're going to make it a singleton so that there only exists one single instance of this class and is accessible from anywhere to do this we first need to create a public static level manager instance then in the awake method we need to check if the instance is equal to null and if it is then we set the instance to this game object and we make sure that this object does not get destroyed when we change scenes if the instance instance is not null then that means it was already set and thus we can destroy this game object next we're going to create two variables one is going to be a public game object reference to the transitions container that we created and the other is just going to be a array of scene transitions and it's going to be private it's private because we're going to programmatically populate this array in the start method by getting the transitions container and getting all of the children that have the scene transition class. Next up, we're going to need a reference to the slider for our progress bar. And for this, we're going to use unityengine.ui. Awesome. Now we're going to move on to the most important part of the code. We're going to write the load scene method, which takes in a string scene name and a string of the transition. Name. And we're going to start a Core routine, and we're going to create that core routine in a second. But first, we need to add Unity Engine Scene Management and System.link. Now, System.link is kind of optional, as you will see in a second. Now we are ready to move on to creating the core routine. It's going to have the same input parameters, so a string or the scene name and the transition. This is probably the most complex line, so don't get frustrated if you don't understand it at first. This is essentially just a simple for loop. But instead of using a for loop, I'm using system.link to have a simple one-liner. So we are accessing the transitions array and we're looping through all of the elements in the array until we find the first element called T that satisfies the following condition, where the name of that transition T is equal to the transition name that we passed as the parameter when we call this method. This will return that transition to us and we can just store it in a temporary scene transition variable. Next, we're going to access the scene manager and we're going to load the scene that was passed in as a string asynchronous. This means it's going to run in parallel. So we will store a reference to that asynchronous operation in a temporary variable called scene. Then we're going to disable scene activation. By default, this is set to true and it means that Unity will automatically activate the scene as soon as it's finished loading. Next, we're going to start the animate transition in core routine and we're going to wait for it to finish by using yield return. That means that the execution of the code will pause when we get to this line and it will wait for the animation to finish before proceeding to the next line of code. So after that's finished we're going to enable the progress bar slider and then we're going to update the progress bar by using the scene progress value that goes from 0 to 0.9. When it reaches 0.9 it means that the scene has finished loading. It gives you that 0.1 so that you can activate 
game objects, spawn things, initialize things. So if you want to do any of that, this is the time to do it. Then we want to activate the scene. We want to disable the progress bar. And finally, we want to do the transition out animation and wait for it to finish. And that's all of the basic code that we need. Now we're going to assign the level manager script to the level manager and assign the two references. We also want to set the sort order of the canvas to a high number so that it appears above all the other canvases. Now we're going to create the first type of transition, which is going to be the crossfade. I'm just going to create a image. How you name this game object is really important because we're going to reference it through the script later. Next, I'm going to make the image fit the entire screen and I'm going to make it black. And then we're going to add a canvas group component to it, which is just going to control the alpha. And now we're going to create the cross Crossfade script. The crossfade class is really simple. It inherits from the scene transition that we created earlier. It has a public canvas group crossfade reference. And then in the animate transition in, I simply use do tween to uh, fade to one, so fade to black, and we simply wait for that to finish. And in transition out, we do the opposite. Now you can use do tween, you can use lean tween, you can do this manually with your own tweening library, um, you can lerp it, you can play an animation here, so it's very flexible, you can do whatever you wish. And then all I have to do is assign this crossfade to my crossfade game object, and I'm just going to assign the canvas group preference. And that's it. Now I have one transition type finished. So now if I want to play this transition, as you can see here on my main menu, when I press the play button, I call the level manager instance load scene and I tell it which scene to load the game scene and I tell it to use crossfade which is just going to be this name right here and that's it for the circle wipe example I have again a circle wipe game object which has a giant circle inside and I just have a circle wipe script that has a reference to that circle again the script is super simple it always has to inherit from scene transition it has a reference to that circle and then on transition in I simply move it from negative 1000 to zero, and then I wait for that animation to finish. And for the transition out, I just move it to the right. That's it. To use the circle wipe instead of the crossfade, it's as simple as writing circle wipe. That's it.